Yo. Yo. Guess who's back? We're back, baby. Yeah, it's your boy Tahoe Syrup, John. Uh, Big Shy, a.k.a. Mr. Raniel. We just want to make a quick shout out to everybody in this specific month. Not any, <laughs> anything particular, but yeah, quick shout out to y'all enduring this heat in the Texas weather. Yes. And for everyone enjoying the weather that's not in Texas, cheers to y'all. Yeah, lucky asses. Yeah, man. If it was a constant <laughs> 60 degrees right now, bro. Man. That's what I need. We need that hoodie weather. Damn. Layers. I remember like last month we were layering. Now we're just like. <laughs> man, now it's like you trying to get naked. <laughs> driving yeah. around. Man, dude. So what's up? We're going to do a little weekend, a weekend recap. Yeah, a little weekend recap. I'm trying to remember what I did. Go ahead and you go first, bro. Man, so this weekend was cool. Um, I uh, I got to go to an Astros game. Uh, we lost, but uh, it's all good. We had some really good seats. We were down by the um, down by the floor, section one thirty, like right in front of the net. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, we did that, and then um, got to see uh, Shuji at uh, off the record. He played. Oh yeah. It was a good thing. It was a Friday night, so I was really looking forward to that. Um, I had seen him, so if you haven't caught him, I'm sure a lot of people have seen him, but he does really dope uh, R&B mashups. That seems to be, like, the biggest thing right now in terms of, like, a lot of um, events and stuff. Yeah. You know, the traveling events and stuff. There's a lot of R&B-focused stuff, so Shuji's tight. Um, saw him and uh, got to kick it. Unfortunately, we, uh, a lot of people lost power during this crazy oh Texas. Oh, my God. Thursday evening, bro. Yeah, I almost bro. forgot about that shit. Yeah. Cause you we were even... outside, though. Yes, super outside. Hey, I met after... up with my boy, Raniel. We were outside for a little bit. We were yeah. on our good behavior and everything. We didn't, know... <laughs> we didn't know how bad it was going to be, like the aftermath of the storm passing. So it was kind of like, oh, yeah, let's just go meet up or whatever. So we met up, and then that's when we noticed, like, trees and just all the power out. It was Everything like, was pitch black, no lights on or anything. No, nah, man. But, hey, we made it out of the tornado, bro. bro. There's seldom you can say that Yeah. out of a natural calamity like that, bro. Yeah. Thank God, man. We made it, though, so that's all good. <clears throat> yeah, man. That's What's up? What, did you, what else did you get into? Thursday, I went out. We went to Poison Girl, Cat Birds, and then we met uh, met you up in the Heights. Yeah, yeah. Um, Friday, I had work. But yeah. then, no, I was off Friday. I don't even remember what I did, but I remember towards the end of the night, I was, like, fixing to get ready. And the next thing you know, I'm in bed <laughs> just, like, scrolling on my phone, dozing off. And I give you that text at 1 a.m. I'm like, hey, bro, I fucking passed out. My bad, <laughs> dog. Man, Shuji was popping. That's what you said, and yeah. I know it's. I don't know. I know I am. I know how I am around crowds, bro. And it's not like I get anxious, but I like. Yeah. If there's no move, there, if there's no room to dance and move around, bro, yeah. I'll be like, nah, hell no. Nah. nah, I got Ain't you. Ain't no pack like sardines in nah, my system, yeah. bro. It was it was packed, bro, and and it was just like. Luckily, we had a small area that we were allowed to go in. Um, because if not, it was just going to be really bad. Like, yeah. it was just shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, kind of just annoying. The whole but it city was, fun. was out, huh? Yeah, everybody was out after this. It's like a lot of people were out of power, so they were just going out because they, they, they were like, well, we got to be out the house anyway. Yeah, ain't nothing else to do. It ain't no yeah. light in my house. There's no time to Some sleep. Some people's shit is still not on, bro. Yeah. They're not going to come on until Wednesday or Thursday. But there's a lot who did get it today, which is yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I actually had no. Sh the only thing that was an issue on my complex was just that the elevator was not working, oh, so man. I was having to go up like four or five flights of stairs, bro. Yeah, four step, yeah. four flights of stairs, and yeah, I definitely felt that shit. But you know, what I'm saying <laughs> you got to endure the journey. Yeah, you got to <laughs> persevere. The journey at the bro. top is worth it, bro. Man, but that's cool. Yeah, the weekend was fine, man. I'm glad we it's Monday right now. Get yeah. this edited out. I'm excited for our next episode. We have a special guest coming your way, guys. That's yes, right, man. A very special guest coming y'all's <clears throat> way. Um, comment below or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you think you know who it is. But if not, we definitely hope that you guys would tune in because um, it's a very special guest. It's kind of the reason why a lot of this was put together. Yeah. Uh, just by natural fruition, I guess. Yep. But uh, yeah, so stay tuned for the end of May episode. That'll be a good one. 
the law of attraction. <laughs> It'll be episode seven, by the way. So we are we're gonna hit that seventh episode milestone. No, this is episode seven. We're doing oh, is now. it? Yeah. Oh snap! It's gonna be episode eight, Kobe episode year. Episode eight, the Kobe year. That's right. The yes. Kobe, yes. Kobe episode. So we got that coming. Um, Do damn. you have a Kobe jersey? No, I don't have one. I don't have a Kobe jersey either. But. Uh-uh. I got his shoes. I got a pair of uh, Adidas Crazy Eights. Mm. Those are like my favorite Kobe. Dude, those are fire, bro. And they're very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, just a classic black and white um, colorway. But yeah, I don't even know if they're still wearable at this point. They might fall apart, man. Hey, were, what, was there an athlete you had growing up that was like very influential to you besides yeah. like Jordan besides, besides Jordan, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Uh, Allen Iverson. Oh, yeah, the answer. Yeah, the answer, the questions. Um, Sean Kemp, uh, Shaq. Um, Dennis Rodman, though. I've been oh, thinking yeah, about Dennis that a lot. Dennis Rodman has been one of my favorite players for a long time. Yeah. Because of how he would put he could put zero points up, but he'd be like one of those like third detrimental players to the team. Like yeah. rebounding and turnovers and just like a menace a menace to society. and his style bro oh, yeah. is like it's so normal today right exactly but back in that time he was wild dude like the wildest dude he's doing things 25 years later that people do now it's just like yeah, that's whatever it's normal yeah. but he was breaking that norm for sure bro when he was on um san antonio spurs i remember oh, all the dyed hair dyed hair green red rainbow bro it didn't matter blonde Man, that dude was bad, man. I like the cheetah hair, bro. The cheetah yes, hair was dope. Bro. He's shout out to Dennis Robin, man. If you ever see us. Yeah, he supposedly he got some family in the Philippines. Dude, he actually lives here. In Houston? In Houston. I have no oh yeah, yeah, I actually heard him I heard he goes to his uh, oh, restaurant in the in the heights all the time. Yeah. That's, yeah, that yeah, he he frequents I forgot what restaurant, man, but they said he's actually cool. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people say he's kind of a whatever, kind of a jerk. But then the other people are like, no, nah, he's super cool. Like, he'll take a picture with you. I think it just depends, man. They're, they're human, too, right? So if yeah. you catch him on a the wrong day, it's like, my bad. Yeah, I'm not trying to uh, bug an athlete. I usually, I remember this one time I was watching a movie, and right next to me was Patrick Beverly. Not like a fucking huge athlete, but yeah, Pat Bev. A lot of Pat Bev, you know, that's an athlete right there. Mm-hmm. He was playing for the Rockets at the time, and he was, like, sitting like maybe like right there, r- yeah. Where you were, I was like, "Damn, that's Patrick Beverly." But I didn't make no reaction. We were watching some movie in in in, Par- in, uh, in Pearland, uh huh, which was so random. But <laughs> he probably lived out there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. For me, bro, I remember moving to the states, and uh, it was around the time when Catino and F- Francis was Dang, playing. Catino Mobley, and that was so fire to me, bro. Those two guards were just. It was like. The way they played, and then like Mobley was straight buckets, bro. He was like the, that one two combo was like Damn. they they were like the epitome of shooting point guards or shooting. Yeah, I mean, granted, Steve Francis was just like an outlier compared to who whoever was coming in in the league, like yeah. from Maryland and shit. <clears throat> he didn't get in the ring though, huh? Nah, Man. supposedly he had like some sort of like. Mental mishaps is when he was yeah. like towards Younger. the end of his career. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, but he was good, man. He used to have a store in the gallery area. I didn't know that. Yeah, he owned some some store. I remember. I forgot. Yeah. Or yeah. something like he had his hand in the Roxy. I don't know. It was something in the gallery area. I, I don't remember. Steve Francis. Yeah, I don't know. There was a lot of athletes. The franchise. I remember I did a uh, a poster or like a paper vest for a school project with for muhammad ali yeah and everyone was doing it with those paper bags and like it would fit everyone <laughs> and I'm like i had a fucking big ass paper bag i don't know how my pop my pops helped me with that shit uh-huh. and like uh i guess he used like two or three of them hoes that I, I was like in second grade just like a big ass ve- paper vest everyone. yeah and i was like man that's that was i remember that being the core memory and then he like he did that project on his own, pretty much. I was just like, dude, I've had many nights of that, man. Um, the school well, projects, type school shit. projects, yeah, man. Where your your parents help you, and you they basically end up doing the whole thing. You know what's crazy? It's like my parent, I, my parents were nurses, but man, they I would think they would help me in science, but they never helped me, bro. I'm like, damn, I had to figure that out on my own. They're like, this is not nursing science, <laughs> yeah. bro. This is. They were just like, nah. <laughs> 
are do you consider Filipinos robots in the in that in the I mean they have a lot of life when when you're in the hospital but it almost seems like their engine never stops bro yeah I got a buddy man his mom's been a nurse forever dude like one time I think it was like three hospitals at one point I'm like dude at the same time something like that she was just something just, ridiculous right yeah bro like or maybe it was two hospitals and one home health super like, tita super tita dude like she just I just remember her man she would always be asleep yeah when she was she, home yeah and then she would wake up and pick us up from school you know and then come back home and sleep or something you know it was so was crazy man she just she was like a super nurse man and i think she just retired yeah and she's working one job just because yeah th- you know? i remember i asked my mom yes like two couple of days ago she was like i was like mom when are you gonna retire she was like if i retire yeah i can travel and do all this but when i'm not traveling i'm gonna be bored yeah so i just i'm gonna keep working until i can anymore and then i was like i respect that but also you just want you want your parents to be resting. She's about to turn 69. Oh, okay. Yeah. June 8th. Yeah. When my mom retired, bro, she just was like, yeah, it's cool. She traveled and stuff. But then she was like, I'm kind of bored. Yeah. You know? It, I guess it just, whatever. Your program, man. Yeah. You need to have some sort of, like, life after work that, like, keeps yeah. you sane and your sanity that's, on check. That's why, like, a lot of them garden. Yeah. Right? Or, like watch korean dramas and stuff damn they'd be invested like i i usually what would be your retirement plan man probably just be able to like cruise you know or like travel just see the rest of the u.s yeah or the rest of the world because i just haven't i don't know man i never really prioritized travel until i got into my adulthood and i started to realize like how important it is to kind of get out and see outside of like your norm and I'm, I'm one for that like i don't like to stay in one place for too long but i think that like traveling wise i think i need that more now yeah. than anything um so i think that's kind of on the list hopefully take my son uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to travel together and go places and kind of just make some memories and experiences yeah exactly yeah lock call, those core memories in we call that momentary illusions is that what it is yeah when you're able to travel around and take that moment of oh, like vacation yeah. and, and just pause like reality, it, right? It makes it feel like you're just yeah leaving everything behind on and starting fresh. World. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Because when you're on vacation, bro, sometimes you just feel like there's no stopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then when that last day comes oh, and you're on man. that plane or you're on that you're drive sad, home, bro. Yeah, the post blue. I remember. I remember this one time I was flying back from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. I just, for some reason, it was just like a ball of emotion just coming out mm-hmm. when I was in the plane heading towards Houston. I yeah. started just tearing up and crying, bro. For real? My mom was like, "What is the matter with you?" Yeah. And I was just like, "Damn, I needed that trip. I didn't realize how much I needed that trip, bro." Yeah. That's why I'm saying, like, if you never, if when you get that chance to go back to the Philippines. You got to take that chance, man. Yeah, never again, bro. I, I I will, definitely. If the opportunity presents itself to me to go yet again, man, I will not hesitate to go. Yeah. I learned that um, you might not get those chances again with your family. And and so if someone's like, hey, come to the Philippines, like, you know, I'm going to help you, you know, whatever. Don't worry about it. Or, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> Yeah, because budgeting for the Philippines, besides the the flight, the flight, it. it's just everything, everything else is doable, clutch, man. Yeah. Next thing you know, like your family's prepping up, yeah, weeks of meals, just events. you're out and like yeah. different, like sceneries, mm-hmm. and like you can just go out and about, and not even have to worry about shit. Yeah, no, I'm down. <laughs> I should have. I was supposed to go beginning of December. Yeah. But I just had to take care of stuff out here. So it was just like, yeah, I'm not going to go. That was crazy because you know what? December is like the time I want to go to the Philippines, bro. Yeah, bro. bro. That's like what they said. It, it, it's it's a different experience when they're, especially because in the Philippines, they do Christmas big. Beginning of the birds. Yeah, bro. It's like, it's just it's just a different experience. Yeah. So I think next time I'll definitely go. <laughs> I want to go to, uh, if you had to pick. Mm-hmm. one spot to go to right now and i asked you something about the like this few episodes ago mm-hmm. but right now there's always like a 
moment in time where you're just thinking, damn, I wish I could just be here, just leave, not worry about anything. Mm-hmm. Like, where would you go right now? Dang. Man, I don't know. Honestly, like, I'm always torn. Maybe Japan. Oh, God, dude. Right? Yeah. I think I'd go to Japan. But if you told me in the States, bro, I'd just be like, yo, I want to go to Las Vegas. Yeah. I like Vegas, bro. <laughs> I don't gamble, you know? I just, I'm not a gambling type. But um, I like the atmosphere and the, just the mood of being in Las Vegas. Yeah. I think it's fun. Everyone's there to just have fun. Right. Like, I, that's when I feel like I can forget about a lot of things back home and just kind of, like, enjoy my moment there because it's like there's always something to do. Or you can always just find something to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it's, like, old Vegas, new Vegas, go eat, go sightsee, you know, just chill, walk around the mall, walk around, like, the um, the hotels and the casinos. And I think other than it being hot, like, I think it's still – I always just have fun when I'm there. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, you hit it right on the nail. Yeah. Because Vegas, no one ever goes to Vegas for not, for some unfun shit. Yeah, they let's have, have the a convention. To like wild yeah. out. And even with those people who go to the conventions, they're there because they're going to have fun yeah. after the convention or before or whatever. <laughs> During. Yeah. And then also, yeah, I mean, Vegas, I mean, Japan, bro, mm-hmm. that's like a goal. I mean, a lot of people go to, have been going to Japan lately and they say it's the best time to go since the yen, the is, yen is so weak. Yeah, yeah. But man, I mean, I watch anime, bro, and uh-huh. just like the inf- the influence, the influence that it has put in my life, like regardless if it was like a shonen or rom com or uh-huh. slice of life, I just I want to see that scenery in Japan, and also like cooking wise, like yeah, you know what I mean. They there was a part in the the notes I was like. No one ever knocks on Japan for copying people's cuisines because mm. they're always so good at recreation and also making it them for like their rendition is almost perfect. Mm-hmm. You can't even knock it. Yeah, no, they, they, they do it to a T, man. Their, their execution on everything is they don't skimp out on anything. So it pays justice to whatever there is, whatever it is that they're like uh, emulating. Right. Yeah. So. I think that's true with like J- Japan in terms of like even in the low rider scene, yeah, Japanese low riders is known like as being like they just create some crazy stuff. Um, they do it to the T, you know. They just execute very well. So yeah. I can see that in clothing, fashion, um, the cars, cuisine. Just it's tight. Yeah, man. Cooking like for me for the food, it's almost just like the type of Jap- Japanese technique that I've seen. Mm-hmm. And the way you're like so locked in and so like it almost seems so meticulous to a point where it's it, you're almost reaching insanity, bro. Because mm-hmm. a motherfucker could just like have the perfect cuts, but it would take him a short period of time. But if you gave somebody like a regular Joe that yeah. amount of shit to do in a period <laughs> of time, they would literally just probably be pulling everything out of their bag right now to just get shit ready you know what I mean? yeah it's like the the best part that i learned when it came to cooking was like just like in life bro because mm-hmm. a lot of the time in cooking it always translate and translates to life itself and like this kind of chokes me up but i remember one of the greatest lessons one of the chefs gave me was uh never have any wasted movement in life or mm-hmm. in the kitchen yeah be point a to point b there shouldn't be any like resistance and we talked about this like having that resistance in life can only be detrimental you know can be really detrimental to you you know what i mean no for sure it's not a straight line but if you're like tunneled in to figure out this is where i want to be then you make that execution happen Mm -hmm. regardless if you're feeling kind of down or sad or yeah. It could be the best day of your life, and you can't even like focus. Yeah, but you gotta fucking have no wasted movement, man. Yeah, that's precision. That's pretty important. Yeah, execution with precision, <clears throat> or at least trying to, man. Because that's true, bro. Um, I think that 
a lot of potential is wasted in the hesitation, bro. Yeah. I think hesitation with a lot of things in life is super, it just, man, it creates like the sense of fear. Yeah. Right. That That's so, it's sometimes it's so much worse in your head than it actually is. So you go through it twice. If that's anything that I can say is like worrying about something that hasn't happened yet only means you go through it twice. Like I've yeah. heard that before and I, I couldn't, I couldn't think that that was so, so true, bro. Like it was so true. Like whenever I heard that, I was like, dang, like you're dreading something yeah. and you don't even know. And it's not even happening. It hasn't happened yet. So now you're putting yourself through twice the amount of stress or you're reliving that twice. That an- anxiety. The anxiety. Becomes peaked. Mm-hmm. You really need to just, you know, for, for someone to just say, I'm going to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. It's so difficult. Yeah. Because a lot of the time reality sets in and you start to figure out what you you would lose yeah or what would happen if this happened the, the sort of reaction in life regardless if it's just like i don't know god forbid bankruptcy yeah or you lose a home mm-hmm. a fucking natural calamity happens you lose everything mm-hmm. but i think if no i believe that if you have the mindset and even though you have those occurrences happen in your life, mm-hmm. it, there's no, I, I hate to say this, but the you just be, you have to be able to bounce back. And I know I'm kind of stuttering about this, but damn, it makes me contemplate about the life that I've lived. And I'm sure mm-hmm. you feel the same way, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that, um, yeah, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bounce back that has to happen, man. Cause life comes at you so fucking fast, bro. Yeah. Like you you can be for example, bro, I'm on year one year almost six months, bro. And I have I will be like going two weeks without thinking about my mom. Yeah. And then boom, bro, I will be like a wreck for like fifteen, twenty minutes and then I'm back, right? Like, I just need to get it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that um, bouncing back from that is so important because it's not that you're like, you're not purposely forgetting it. You know what I mean? Or you're not trying to think about them or whatever. It's just that life happens and you are like distracted or you got so many other things to do. And then the stuff that you compartmentalize or whatever, it kind of creeps out a little bit. And it's like, hey, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> you get so, to really see the layers in that shit. Yeah. And um, to segue on that, man, I, I believe May is Mental Health Awareness yeah. Month. So um, I think that's super important, man, that we, uh, I mean, we're just kind of spitting this out as we go. Because I think that this, this the, the tone of this episode is kind of, you know, we're still going to keep it humorous. But we also want to shed light on how important, like, getting your mental health in yeah. line is. Like, it's it's some real stuff, man. I think that everyone's general consensus now is that it is talked about more often and it's less a a taboo right yeah because people can nonchalantly talk about it and you don't get the type of reaction that you used to maybe a couple years ago where everyone's like what yeah like what's wrong with you like oh shit don't talk to him or you know um but i think that it's important man and and, you know you can attest to this it's just like yo doing what you got to do to kind of stay in line with the balance that that you might feel is off sometimes, right? Yeah. In your mind, it's like taking those steps to kind of be like, hey, this is what I have to do to get right, so I'm going to do them. Like making sure you don't skimp out on those things. You know what I mean? Whatever mental clarity looks like to you, I think that's important. Yeah. And also just not cheating yourself Mm -hmm. in those situations where you know you can better your life. It's just like when you're doing physical exercise or you're doing mental exercises, and you you see yourself cutting corners sometimes, yeah. But in realization, just takes those steps, regardless of how fast they may be. Yeah, you have to be able to take those steps and finish off and not cheat yourself. Yeah, man. Because in in you know, we all say this, but in, in life, man, it's the product or what you put in, you'll see the byproduct come out. Yeah, that's true. But mental health, yeah, I just. I honestly forget that it was Mental Health Month on May, man. Yeah, I saw something, bro. I don't know where I was, but it was, like, in lieu of mental health. I was like, oh, snap. I was like, all right, well, we're damn near a little past halfway through. Well, yeah, we're at the last, you know, 
the last part of it, but um, yeah, Good yeah, timing. it's definitely. You know, if you feel like you're going through some things, man, and you've never experienced what it is to have a therapy session or or just talking to somebody, um, there are a lot more people who have gone through a lot of the same things that you might be entering or or in the middle of yeah. who can offer a lot of insight. You know, I mean, always seeking professional help is kind of like obvious, the obvious answer. Yeah, the neutral. Yeah. But um, even just talking about it and not, not uh, keeping quiet, because I think silencing those kinds of things is so unhealthy man it, yeah. it, it affects so many more people the moment it comes out and you catch people off guard or you know they just don't realize you know what, that it was affecting you and now you've kind of you know n unintentionally exploded in, in a way right yeah. or just like let it all come out at once and it's just like dang I no need it's to, true you need to chill out it's almost I, I i always think of it as like this it's like when you internalize those feelings, it just seeps into who you are as a person and mm -hmm. your soul. Yeah. yeah. And it's really important in that sense to be able to express yourself regardless of what medium you have. Mm -hmm. Like for me, man, it could be something neutral in this neutral setting, like a just like being out in the cafe mm -hmm. or being able to record this podcast and just like, not even talk about certain things or certain yeah. aspects of what I'm experiencing, mm -hmm. but just feeling it and having that not euphoric recall, but having that recall for that itself, you know yeah. what I mean? Because like that, just like you said, mental clarity is so key to what you have and to s simply put like, when you have that clarity, bro, you almost have no hesitation on what you want to do in life, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, the fog is gone. The haze is gone. You're able to, like, make better decisions. Yeah, the or mental fog sucks, dude. Yeah, you're just able to, like, just, att you know, <clears throat> attack in the way that you feel the most beneficial. Yeah, because, I mean, personally, bro, I'm, I'm on some medicine right now yeah. that my psychiatrist gave me. And, like, I, I was really against that shit when I, mm -hmm. like, a few years ago. But then, like... I started noticing the changes in my life yeah. that were for the good, like mm -hmm. like my antidepressants that I'm taking and yeah. like my bipolar medicine that I'm taking. Yeah, it give it keeps me on the baseline. Uh -huh. But the only downfall to it is like sometimes when I'm like going towards like a rough patch, mm -hmm. it keeps me right there at that baseline. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I can't really feel those emotions with how I feel when I'm sad. Oh, I got so, you. So, like, processing seems so oh, numbing. Yeah, yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you know, I'm like, why the fuck don't I feel sad? Something or that like, you should, na you would expect yourself to naturally feel sad about. Yeah. It, it, it's a threshold. Like, it's just like, no, I won't allow you to yeah, do it. Yeah, I won't way. let you go. Yeah. I won't let you go down or up. That's mm -hmm. that's one thing I experienced with, and I talked to my psychiatrist about that. She was like, yeah, you're gonna always, uh, most of the time, be at that baseline because that's what you need to be at, where you need to be at. Yeah. So on a daily or for myself, whatever. like when I'm in, say I'm in a happy moment, I have to remind myself, this is a happy moment. It mm -hmm. almost, it's like very binary in a sense. Yeah. It's yeah. like black or white one zero or zero and ones. Like I'm like, the value is true. I am happy here. Yeah. And then even like sad moments like that. What's up, sir? <laughs> but it was, it was something that I just was grateful for man so yeah. like a a good doctor can really take you to gr take you far man yeah. at least for me like my psychiatrist really helps yeah there goes saying he wants a beverage all right <clears throat> all righty one second all right go ahead yeah so guys Raniel, Mr. Big Shot here is going to get a beverage for Saint, even though we told Saint not to come out. Nah, it's all good. He's not in jail. <laughs> yeah, so mental health, mental health. Sometimes I feel like I'm not even at a point to myself to even express how I really feel or even. But then why shouldn't I even be able to speak out and talk about what I am feeling like. Is this a Drake moment that I'm having, bro? What is this exactly? 
like to be able to process those emotions and even coincide with what I'm going through in life, man, I don't know, bro. Just ain't got a bevy. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, so Ranielle's I'm, back. Ranielle's back. So yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I think that um, yeah. If you like, I said earlier, man. If you feel like you're going through some things, talk to people. Uh, stop. Um, stop thinking that you can figure everything out on your own. Yeah. I think that that's. I mean, it, it's not. I can't say it's ridiculous, but it's like at the same time, you should really, really venture into speaking about it because clearly keeping this internal stuff to yourself. Is like, I don't know how much that's helped you, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to, like, categorize, but I feel like whoever it is that you seek to, to vent to or speak to, it's very important that you do. Because, like, you're just, you just keep suppressing and you just keep holding on to stuff. Yeah. It's just not healthy, man. And I'm obviously not a professional, but I just couldn't see how holding in something that's so detrimental, right, how that could be beneficial in a way that it would you know help you to get over something or get through something right if yeah. you're not vocally like aware of it to where you're able to talk to somebody about it and like really talk it out hear yourself say it you know yeah and receive feedback about it i think that that's it's wild to, to just that's a good exercise to have yeah. regardless if it's just a neutral mm -hmm. neutral uh grounds or you're with your like close homies or mm -hmm. even like siblings man sometimes you don't even want to yeah a lot of the times where we talk about grieving and then like also mm -hmm. processing out like generational trauma that if you experience with your siblings not not say that your parents are just like always gonna give you that sort of trauma but it's not their fault you know what i mean like yeah sometimes yeah. i'll be like talking about siblings i'm like bro the type of shit we have to experience Mm -hmm. And the type of shit they had to experience, my, my parents had to experience, or our parents had to experience to get us here. Yeah, it's 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 such a sticky situation, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. But yeah, so that kind of was um, something that we had talked about. You know, you know, pre pre episode was like, you know, it's the month of May. There's a lot of things going on outside of the fun stuff that we do, but yeah. we did just definitely want to shed light on like the real the real side of the the mental warfare that goes on with everybody day to day uh yeah. not just you know people you know about it was like literally almost like everybody has a war that they're waging yeah. bro inside um internally mentally in their hearts whatever and um you just got to try and be as good as you can to people because you just don't know how what stage of the war that they're waging yeah. you know if it's the beginning the middle the end if they're ready to just wave the white flag i mean you just don't know so i think um approaching in the attempt to just be a a better person is is a real thing i've had people who have become you know my clients who have just offered me just words of wisdom words of like just just outlook bro on mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that i'm going through and it's like i appreciate that so much because dude shit man there's just times when when you're going through things bro you just like dude i just wanted to stop yeah. i just don't want to do this anymore you like don't want to succumb to it at no, all man you just want to dance around it and live to see another day yeah but you don't know how and you're just like dude i don't want to wake up thinking about this shit but um but you made it man. but you, you make, make it. it you make that's it. that's the trade-off bro it's like as heavy as the war that is waging inside yeah. of you um that that opportunity to wake up the next day or even a month down and you realize that like yo that didn't end me yeah you know what i'm saying like i'm, I'm alive <laughs> and it never stops y'all yeah, yeah don't ever feel like just because you felt this sort of clarity and you feel like the battle has won mm-hmm there's always going to be something. There's more bad. There's, there's more, more, wars, more to yeah. come. And yeah. you don't ever succumb to those feelings of, I'm, I'm going to lose this battle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. never, first off, never feel like you're alone. Yeah. Never feel like this is something you can't go through. This is something that you're able to process. You're coherent enough to understand that this is temporary. Mm -hmm. 
but it keeps yeah. put you got to just keep pushing you know what i mean yeah i think a good strategy is everything that you've learned to overcome the previous battle you take that with you into the next one man yeah good uh yeah you, you gotta gain experience bro just like yeah. in video games fam <laughs> You gain experience, side missions. You level up. You level up. Mm -hmm. Explore the other galaxies, <laughs> the other worlds. Yeah, and man. next thing you know, end game 100%, bro. That's cool. That's what I'm saying. You got to be able to see end game in life and have that higher level of thinking. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, just like we talked about last episode, like, what is our role in life? Mm -hmm. What What know. is, what, what do you think it is, like? When it comes down to it, yeah. all is written. And we talked about this yes earlier yeah, today, bro. Yeah. We and talked about um everything that happens in your life, man, is all is predestined. And I don't know, it is it's a crazy theory to, to fall back on, but it's like everything is written and it's up to you, uh, the level of resistance that you yeah. you go against the writing. You know what I mean? kind of determines the level of struggle <laughs> that you yeah. have in life. I don't know. The fate, the destiny. Yeah. The... It's like your journey is whether or not you succumb to understanding that it is written and that you put up the least amount of resistance against what was written for you. I don't know. It sounds crazy, but it's kind of just yeah. one way to look at this multidimensional um, thought of yeah. is life predestined for you? It is it is it written for you? Um, that's on some... What is known is to be known. <laughs> that's also, for what we discover is for yeah. For what was always there. That's Baby Yoda talk. Yeah. For yeah. what was to be discovered was always there. Yeah. Damn, bro. Man, but we know this is a different take on our usual our usual take. But we just really wanted to talk about some some stuff <laughs> to kind of get it through the barrel. Damn. Yeah. So what's up, man? What are you listening to today? Yeah, traffic jams, bro. <laughs> is, yeah, man. Motherfucker was listening to the Dalai Lama. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I was listening. Nah, I've been listening to this uh, No Worries by Anderson Pock and uh, mm. Knowledge. They do like a mix. Okay. I was play uh, Jackie was playing it at the house uh, at the on the record when you were there. Okay. Yeah, it was like a little vibe. But uh, that's pretty much <laughs> it. And like. I've been listening to our podcast and seeing where we come. Yeah. How far we've come. Um, I've been jamming, uh well not jamming, but I've I've come across him as Obed Padilla. Mm. Yeah. You should check him out. Obed Padilla or whatever. My bad if I'm pronouncing that wrong again. But um to reference last week's episode, I did find uh, Pimmy. Pimmy, bro. Yeah, P I M. P I M, right? Yeah, Pim. I listened to uh, one there's song. There's a couple, yeah, there's a couple on it that are like, yo, this has great potential. Yeah, right? on her Apple Music, she had yeah. this one recent drop. Yeah, it, it was, was more of a recent drop. Yeah. That shit was dope. Like bro. the production and the, the yeah. beat. Yeah, that's the one that I was like, yo, this is tight. Yeah, I can't but, even knock on her. Yeah, for sure. She seems like she was like multiracial. Yeah, that's why I couldn't. She I had couldn't, like three flags on her Instagram. Yeah, bro, I couldn't figure them out. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. I don't know. Samoa? Samoa? Like. Half a day. <laughs> Maybe, um, bro. You know what I'm saying? Those islanders will yeah. find a way to sing. Yeah, for sure. Hey, no sunshine. <laughs> oh, man. But Traffic Jams has been a good segment we've been continuing. Mm -hmm. We kind of cut short on the food segment, man. We need to be able to just, like, have some food and snacking. We yeah. need to be able to be snacking on the episodes yeah healthy snacks maybe here and there a little unhealthy dog <laughs> enjoy the soul for a little bit yeah we're gonna have that 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 uh episode eight will be special yeah so maybe we have we will have something yeah cooking literally quite How, literally. Bro, what uh do you eat oxtail man bro i'm so like weird about it like i will what if it's deboned yeah oh, but, i think uh, that's but the a bone itself you're like oh, yeah hell, i i just but I've had it like at Mickey's Soul Food, right? The yeah. oxtail greens and all that stuff. And I've obviously had it in like Filipino food. Yeah. I just, when I think about it, I just get weirded out, bro. But if I don't have that train of thought, I can do it. Yeah. It is very tender. Too. Like just, oh yeah, but I just, <laughs> I think about the tail, bro. Dude, the first meal that I ever cooked Jackie was a beef caldereta, mm -hmm. oxtails. It was for family meal. Uh-huh. And, uh. 
she actually the shift was over and she was just waiting for me to finish my dish uh -huh. and then she was like so this is my perspective of this. She, was like, <laughs> she was like digging that shit yeah um you know all the heart emojis and shit mm -hmm. i was like yeah but honestly man the amount of time that i put in there and the ingredients that i put it was like I'm sure you can relate to this, but mm -hmm. it almost seemed like your innocence when you're starting to build your craft yeah. at that, that raw emotion that you put into it mm -hmm. is what drives you to become the person you are today in that sense, man. And yeah. That's how I feel. Like the, the way that I was cooking that meal, it just seemed like everything was so seamless, bro. Yeah. And I really like, to draw back just just to fall back on that it's just like damn when i was making that family meal i literally was only cooking that shit for her bro mm -hmm. i was like i was like hella in love man and i just what? honestly just met her bro that's what's we up we met man. at the we met at the that restaurant which one at Poutine. Oh, Poutine. they're closed now but he opened up another restaurant called Augustine's that they're doing like pop-ups here and there around mm -hmm. the city again. But uh, yeah, bro. That mm -hmm. I actually never cooked that dish again ever since we like, so it's like started six dating. Years? It's been like six years since I cooked that Dang, shit. Dude. We we'll have to do it. We have to run it back. Well, dude. I need to run it back, bro. Yeah. See if I still got it. Yeah. When it comes to Filipino food, like I really don't have any recipe books or anything for it, bro. It's just by taste. It's just like what i know and like how i build my like repertoire mm -hmm. in in whatever cuisine it may be mm -hmm. but when i started cooking bro everything that i did was for filipino food mm -hmm. i was like learning how to braise properly learning how to sear things even sim something simple as like cooking a fucking country style egg with the crispy edges and shit yeah that was my shit bro you know, man, I'm not like a big cook, but I I can like follow directions and I can, I can cook to taste, you know. Yeah. And the in the few moments that I did get to cook for people at my house, like Filipino food, like it was pretty good. Yeah. Like I was like very proud of myself. Damn, bro. Uh, yeah. Hey, not to interrupt you, but yeah. guys, I want to let y'all know, man. When your friend cooks for you, bro, that means so much more. Yeah, man. But if your friend doesn't pick up the food that he cooked i know bro no, that, that's so messed Ray up yo asked for mungo bro yeah i asked for a very specific dish man and I my like, homie you know what? was I like got you, bro. I got you, i'm bro. gonna do it he did it and then not my schedule yeah just didn't granted your family from out of town was here yes so bro i, I didn't know, know how it is bro you never just like you always go out to eat when you're with yes, your family, bro. unless you got like some OGs in the house that are just like chopping it up. If if they weren't here, then I would have just been like, yeah, I'm coming through. And then when, by the time I was able to, you were already going back to work. Yeah. So I didn't want to make like your wife like wait for me at the house and be like, oh, I'm here to pick up the food, you yeah. know. But um, nah, it's all good, bro. I got we got a lot of Filipino food to cook and like. All my renditions of this, oh, not even renditions, because I stay true to what I know. Yeah. It's, it is Filipino-American in a sense, mm -hmm. but there are some influences on how I did it. Like, with the mungo, bro, I actually put hondashi in it to give it that smoky fish taste. Okay. You know what hondashi is? No. It's like a smoked bonito flake. Oh, yes. But they put it in granule form. It's in, like, oh, granule form. So instead it has of like that, a, that thin, flaky yeah. form? Yeah. So, like, dashi is usually kelp or, like, kombu. Mm. Um the bonito flakes and then some other components that depending on where you're cooking dude i don't think i ever told you man when we were younger we had a, a japanese roommate like from our my mom's church who stayed with us for a couple months yeah and he was like legitimately from japan bro like spoke japan yes i mean bro. spoke japan yeah spoke japanese. he spoke japan bro like <laughs> his name was kiho niko nakagawa damn but it was longer than that. i just remember where you at fam and uh he would cook like i know this isn't japanese but he would show me like oh well, i guess it is right or no egg drop soup is not japanese right that's uh that's just an asian soup okay in general i just remember him cooking it and then he would do a bunch of other random japanese foods and he would just make it at our house 
And that's how I knew about those flakes. Mm. Because he would just let me eat the packet. He's like, here, just eat this. Because they had individual packets of the fish flakes. That's like fifth jer- uh, fish jerky, bro. Yeah, bro. And I would eat it. It had that smoky taste, man. And it was cool. So I was introduced to Japanese cuisine quite early as a kid, man. Did I already ask you what your top three Filipino dishes are? <clears throat> if not, let's refresh that. What's your top three Filipino dishes, bro? Man, so mine are basic. Like, yeah, man, I, because my cuisine has kind of changed, like my, my palate amongst Filipino food or in the Filipino food realm has changed a lot because of like dietary restrictions and stuff. <laughs> and just my overall like mental, like f- um, whatever you want to call it. Like, I think that I like, like what you mentioned, I like mungo. Yeah. Right? Like the beans, the lentils, the small lentils or whatever it Man, is. I'll put my soul on that shit, bro. Yes, bro. I Next like time, that. Though. Um, I do like, mine are very much vegetable based. Yeah. So I like bitter melon. Pinak bed. Pinak bed. Yeah. I like that. And then, um, what's the other one, bro? That it's like, it has like squash, eggplant, green beans. Um, sometimes they put bitter melon in it. Yeah. Pinak bed. Yeah. Well, did I say that? already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So those are like minor vegetable based Filipino yeah. dishes, bro. I'm fucking with that tortong talong. Oh bro. yeah, I left that one out. That was my third one, bro. That's actually that uh, smoky eggplant. That's impressive, bro. Because that's the literally all those dishes can be vegan. Yeah, almost. <laughs> they got hella shrimp paste. Yeah, shrimp paste. Or fish sauce. Boy. Yeah, pork. Yeah. But yes, they are very much very uh, vegan renditioned. Because there is a, a there's like a instagram filter where you can do your top 10 filipino dishes have you played it yet no it's pretty dope bro because uh-huh. you can rate you can rate it from one to ten obviously and then they have all the dishes but they don't ob- they obviously don't have all of them yeah the like, mainstream ones like punse no 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 they have all of them but you can't pick them all because uh-huh. it only gives you 10 options oh okay yeah so you'll have your different like takes every time you do it so it's fun to do okay you should try that bro all right i'll, I'll check it out but uh for me, man, I don't know. Filipino food as a whole, my friend said it perfectly, but I kind of disagreed. What was it? He said Filipino food is like the perfect beige because, mm. like, there's a lot of, I, I mean, my interpretation of that was, like, they get one specific tone in the food itself and they perfect it, whereas, like, say you're eating Thai food or Vietnamese food. Mm-hmm there's like this punch of like herbs or like sweet yeah. and spicy like adobo in itself is it could be very acidic it could be very savory because of the soy sauce or any like salting component that you put yeah but i get i get what you're saying but i feel like with filipino food it is it's the soul food of asia bro yeah like the type of braising that we do and also like we just let it slowly simmer down to it's like natural like the way we break down it's like muscles or like break down the vegetable starches or like the integrity of the dish is like Mm -hmm. always intact because of like how i don't know man they just pour their love in that fucking food bro yeah that's that's just my that's my take i just i feel like we're blessed to be Filipino, man. Dude, there was one point, though, man. I'm not going to lie. I can't even front. Somebody asked. I think it was a close friend of mine at the time. She was like, "Like, what are your top three Asian foods? You know? And, bro, I didn't even have Filipino as, like, my top, man. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not either. Yeah. Okay. I, had, <laughs> I love like, Filipino food, bro. But I think Thailand, Thai yeah, food. Yeah, Thai food and Thai Korean, food, Japanese, Japanese food. Japanese. Yeah, and I said that Filipino f- dishes are a little different. Like, they require... I forgot. I saw that video about it where this dude was talking about it. Some OG Filipino guy. But um, they were just talking about how it's it's cooked to obviously share. Yeah, the six to eight people. Six to eight people. Um, heavily dependent on, you know... Who you share with, the yeah, palate they have. And the rice, you know. Yeah. But yeah, man, I don't know. For me, I like the French influence in Vietnamese food. Oh, I like the um, so good, I like bro. Thai food. I like Japanese food. Man, I just like food. But I'm just saying, man. Yeah. I don't hate on Filipino food. I just, you know, 
Yeah, for me, you were right, though. Like, I think Filipino food, Thai food, Japanese food, and Vietnamese food, mm -hmm. those are, I mean, those are my top four in no specific order. Bro. Yeah, yeah, you just group but together. Like, a lot of the times, man, for convenience, you're not eating Filipino food. Bro. No, it's like, not. Like, you're always a... eating, like, Chinese food. Yeah, Or, like, Vietnamese. Pan Am shit or some Vietnamese food. Mm -hmm. Like some bun me or fucking yeah, just like, like a, a rice plate, a rice vermicelli rice bro. roll, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, There's some Thai rice roll shit. <laughs> Damn, that sounds good. But yeah, well, we're 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 in the we're in the uh, damn bro trip. I gotta work on not stuttering. It's all good. My mind just be processing faster than how I want to <laughs> speak, bro. I caught myself reading, and I was like, damn, why am I reading so slow, bro? <laughs> Dude, I've been able to, like, I remember in school, I would read the same sentence, like, five times <laughs> yeah. before I realized I was reading. Like, because I was trying so hard to process it, but my mind would just be, like, looking around the class. You know, it felt like yeah. my mind was looking around the class versus reading and understanding what I was reading. They're like, that, my friend, is ADD. No, I'm just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. There you go. I get it. You were simply a child, bro. Yeah, very much. Childish Ranbino. <laughs> yeah, Ranbino. Ranbino, dude. That's going to be my new um, Handle. IG handles, Childish <laughs> Ranbino. Oh, man. You know what I was thinking, bro. What's up? This is not an interview question, but mm -hmm. I really want to see. I wish, huh? I wish we could just fucking tell the future, man, because... The way it's looking, bro, it's looking kind of bright, man. Well, that's good. That's a great outlook to have, bro. Because if you were like, the future is very grim and, yeah. and dim and all the above, I'd be like, well, shit, that's that's kind of scary. Yeah, no, nah, but, but the like your outlook. Yeah, your outlook is is everything. And also with me, man, I just feel like the sense of belief that you have that prosperous and like. Mm prosperous future ahead of you i mean it isn't the law of attraction that's that's the number one key it's just it's it's your mindset that's going with it man it's like i don't know if that makes sense but <laughs> no i got you bro man. i just really want i just really want it and i just believe it's going to happen and yeah i wish the best for everybody that's tuning in because like when it really comes down to it, if we're all good and we all eat, the world just becomes a better place, bro. Yeah. People are happier when they're fed. Yeah. And they're full. Closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. Yep, yep. Man, there's a lot to think about on this episode, man. Yeah, we were. A lot to process. Was uh, What was something that you were, like, really... Thinking about yeah, what were you thinking about? Like, in not to get in your head, but it's like oh no, yeah. Um, I was thinking about would you rather be uh, stuck without paper towel or stuck without toilet paper? I'm stuck without toilet paper, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm paper towel dog. Yeah, cause you know why? I can wash my ass, bro. Yeah. But I can't clean them fucking tables or <laughs> with the t with the toilet paper, bro. That's, I that's, mean, with, yeah, with, with toilet, toilet paper, paper, I'm not cleaning no fucking toilet. Could you paper. imagine? You know how much residue it leaves behind, yeah. like the the lint or whatever from the the shards of it. Yeah. <laughs> like after he sprayed, that's crazy because that's what I was thinking too, man. I was like, bro, the best cleaning products has always have always has the best in. Like the best composition of fabric, like, yeah, man, or the best composition of scruff, bro. Yeah, you can't always just be a smooth motherfucker, bro. Yeah, you need some rough <laughs> neck, just cleaning motherfuckers. That just those should be your tools, bro. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I don't need, bro. All I need when I'm cooking, so I mean, cleaning is like a metal scrub, bro. You know those metal scrubs back in the restaurants you used to? Oh work yeah, at? yeah. They'd be fucking killing all the grime on, oh, the, yeah, on yeah. the pan or like anything that you're frying you're the just, silver the or silver, the copper silverback yeah. just silverback uh scrub bro <laughs> the big back scrub <laughs> the big back big back yeah, dude yeah i don't know man i was i was like i was just thinking about the times when you when you were in that 
stickies, bro. Yeah. Dude, that food truck life is hard, man. It ain't easy, dog. How long yeah. were you doing that for? Like almost two years. Yeah. How did you know it was like, I'm not doing this shit? Well, I mean, it was all love with the people that yeah, you're doing. Yeah, no, with. 100%. Still, my, my friends to yeah, this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think, like, they just took it upon themselves. They were like, you know, the business, you know, we're going to take it in a direction where we are able to kind of do it with just his sister and him. Yeah. So it kind of was like, all right, bet. And then it was kind of like our ultimate goal is to open a restaurant. And if in the event that that happens, like you're always more than welcome to come work or whatever. But I think it's just kind of a, a part of my life that just it kind of just faded. Yeah. Like working in, you know, in the food industry. Like it's I just, tough, man. Yeah, I've never been a waiter. You know, I've been a bus boy. I've worked in a food truck. I mean, in the food truck, you're kind of like all positions too, right? Man, I feel like you're really hospitable, though. Man. And also, like, I feel like you're very personable. So I feel like man. if you ever want to slang some tables or slang Dude, some dishes, I, bro, I, I've I feel like you'd be really it. good. Because, like, describing dishes, I'm sure you can do it. Man. And then just, like, having that bank of knowledge for, like, the yeah. menu or, like, the drinks or like the type of components that go into these drinks would, or dishes, bro. But dudes would be just wanting to try to fight me, bro, because yeah. I would just be flirting with. Nah, I'm just <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But I've always, I've always wanted to. Um, I've always wondered how I would be as a waiter, yeah, or a server. I, I feel like. Do you believe that everyone before they get, before they are in like this point in life where they can say they've experienced enough, they should. Yes, they should be in the industry, the, the hospitality, food and hospitality industry, yeah, hospitality industry to know yep. what it's like serving the grimy ass people, the most yes. beautiful the, people, the, the rudest, the people. rudest yeah. people. Like I feel like everyone should experience that, man. Yeah, because Cause how you just like I'm so big on that, especially since we talked about it. But yeah. the sense of pivot and the sense of like reactory, like reaction that you have for like yeah. those interactions, like man, bro. It's real, man. I yeah. think it'll humble you. Yeah. So quick, man. And then being able to alleviate like issues and like mm -hmm. um, think on your feet. <laughs> yeah, think on your feet, bro. Yeah. Be sticking on. You, you don't always want to feel like you're walking on eggshells, bro. Yeah. No, I know how that feels. And, that's and man, you fun. know how it is, man. De-escalating a situation or yeah. an argument. Yep. With a person that's paying for this service, service. yeah, bro. Yep. Dude, that is so difficult, man. It is, man. And I think that, like, you know, sometimes man, when I'm eating with people and the way that they talk to the waiter. Oh, bro. I uh, I mean, at my table, I also feel some type of way. Like, if they don't speak to the waiter with respect, yeah. I feel for the waiter. I like, know. I'm like, yo, man, like, don't talk to them like that. Like, yeah. Because they're literally the closest thing to our food. Right. Yeah. And they're literally working this job. So why would why would you give them that impression that you're a jerk? And now that he thinks the whole table is a jerk or a bunch of jerks. Yeah. You know? I don't know how many times they flagged tables because they were assholes. Yeah. They go back to the in. hell. Yeah. They go back you to the kitchen like, yo, screw those guys at table 12. You yeah, know, like table 12 assholes, like assholes, dude. You know, like I never want to eat with people like that. You know, yeah. so I just don't. I always try to be nice to them, even if someone I'm sitting with. Um, it's kind of rude or just doesn't look at them when they say what they want. They're just looking down at the menu and they're like, yeah, I'll get this, blah, blah. And they don't even like pay them attention. And That's them. true. Man. And I'm like, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, I just make it, make them know, aware that I'm like, yo, I appreciate you. Like my bad for this person, <laughs> you know, cause it's just like, dude, don't be a jerk, man. But yeah. if the surface is trash, I might oh, be trash well, then, too. Yeah, we're going to be, we're, we're going to throw <laughs> hey, trash at each if other. If you were trash, I might be trash with you, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we could trash it out, you know? Yeah. Trash hugs. Man, shout out to the petty kings out there. We are outside, bro. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, man, the pettiness in me, bro. That's yeah. one thing I need to work on, bro. Not being so petty, bro. Yeah. Like, That's, emotionally, yeah. the emotional maturity yes. that you have to not be petty. Yeah. Because you're just like, what is the satisfaction of being petty? Yeah. No fucking way it helps you in any way, man. Man. You know what I mean? But like the mischievous like <laughs> side of you is just like so fulfilled when you're just petty, bro. That's yeah. That's me, bro. That's I how mean, you stick it to him. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah, no. That's the uh, Yeah. Working on being petty, bro, is, is is a big thing. Yeah. That um 
I feel like I need to. I don't think I'm super petty, bro, but there are moments when I know I can be, but I just bite my tongue, bro. Yeah. I'm like, dude, if this situation wasn't dictated by, or the outcome of this, you know what I mean, wasn't super vital, bro, I would just lay into that so hard. But I just got to, like, watch how I move. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'd be feeling like, I mean, you got to hold your tongue sometimes in those yeah. situations, bro, because it's just not... A lot of the times, you know, I'm going to take a step back, be the bigger person, and de-escalate the situation yeah. by just leaving or whatever. But mm-hmm. I was never the one to, like, it's not that I'm passive. Yeah. But I was never the one to just, like, engage so that I can de-escalate. It was more so, like, I got to step back, mm-hmm. process, and then be able to confront in the later setting, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let me gather myself. Gather yourself. Not that I'm, like, shook, but it's more so, like, I don't want you to see an ugly side of me because I'm processing at the same time type shit. Yeah, you're forcing me to process faster than required, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny, man. I think understanding that people process differently is a big virtue to controlling the level of arguments that happen. Whether that be friendships, family, relationships, marriages, you got to know how somebody processes. Because when you have two people that process at, at highly different rates, is that, and I say that right, but anyways, the rate of processing is super one-sided to the other side of the scale. Yeah. You just have to really um, find a common ground. Yeah, because you know, a lot of the times when you, like, like you said, bro, like, I'm a solver, bro. Yeah, if you can process a lot faster in something that you've experienced Mm -hmm. more than the the other person, of course that this person might feel intimidated from that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They won't say shit. But but they they have that sort of experience that you haven't experienced before, and it can go flip on you too. So it's almost Mm -hmm. just like... It's double-edged, bro. Yeah, double-edged, but the double-edged should be in the middle ground always, bro. Yeah. But yeah, man, where we at on this episode, bro? Damn, it's already one hour, dog. Dang. Damn, we were chopping it up, y'all. We, hey, let's. You want to end it right there? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's end it right there, yo. Episode seven. This seven. is Tahoe Syrup, John, Big this, Shy, Big <laughs> Shy. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I know we were all over the place, but this is something that we just enjoy doing. We weren't actually gonna do it today because I was supposed to be working. Yeah. But um, shout out Jerry Duty. <laughs> Jerry got Duty. out. Jerry duty. Jerry. All right, guys. See y'all later. Enjoy.